Guys, I have a really cool video for you guys today. Super informative and I'm gonna get like down into the numbers and stuff and the details because I think this is gonna answer like all of the questions, hopefully answer all of the questions you have on spacers for your truck. A lot of you guys have the anything from 2011 to newer uh, GM HD trucks, which means Chevy, GMC 25 and 3500, uh, single rear wheel. Uh, also there, there's spacers for dualies, but that'll be a, a different topic for a different day. Many of you guys are wanting to put on bigger tires on your stock wheels and then have modified suspension or some maybe even stock suspension. Um, so I kind of want to cover that and why you need spacers with bigger tires and depending on your situation, which one will fit best for you. So I'm going to go over that into detail. Yank off one of these tires on the truck now. I have my stock wheels and tires out in the back and at least I can give you a good idea of what to expect even though this is not a leveling kit and those aren't 37s we'll be able to tell right away what does and doesn't work and what's going to be the best for you. So I'm going to lay out these spacers on the table, all the three sizes we're going to offer as of right now at the time of making this video. And then we're going to go over the details of why you would pick each one. So I'm going to, I'm going to learn as I go with you guys, cause I don't really know these numbers yet. Okay. So we're going to see how many churns. It's the same lug nut as the other ones, but this is Chrome. Uh, we're going to see how many churns that we get when we put this on, right? So that's on there. So we got half, one turn, two turns, three turns, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. That's eleven and a half. So we just got those on there, eleven and a half churns. And that was going on um, an aftermarket wheel with like a splined, um, you know, lug, right? So, I mean, they don't have to be splined. They could be just like this, what you guys see on the camera. Um, black chrome whatever the OEM ones are gonna be a little bit different I don't know how many turns you're gonna get on this but I expect probably around the same um, and obviously a lot of you guys care about um, and rightfully so about how many turns you can get these lugs on here um, and you want to see how close you can get to factory right now as we're talking like I'm on the groups and the forums every day on the old forums that were on like you know Duramax form all that you're not gonna find that this data anywhere so I'm gonna give it to you because you guys are all wondering like, do I put spacers on? I'm a little bit nervous. They don't have a good reputation. Well, Bora has an amazing reputation and it's because you're not going and buying some cheap overseas made product. Um, so everything's made here in the US and it is freaking bulletproof, which is what B stands for in Bora anyways. So I'm gonna stop talking about this. I wanna make this not super, super long of a video, but 11 and a half churns. We're gonna get that whole thing off. I'm gonna bring over that stock wheel and I'm gonna show you all three different options. And again, we're gonna go into like, how many turns can you get on there? Minimum is, I don't know, it depends who you ask. Three, like really? If you wanna go the min, min, minimum. Um, Boris says get at least six turns on there. So we're gonna try that. And I also got another kind of option if you ain't gonna get enough turns on it. We're gonna try that too. Um, but yeah, so that's everything I wanted to cover. Three. I would not ever do on these trucks minimum six but we're going to go as high as we can uh, my goal is to do 11 and a half or i guess if it was possible do more um we want these things seated on here especially on the front so we're going to jump into that right now i'm going to pull this wheel and tire off and we're going to get to it so we're going to see what our baseline is these two, we have a lug here, a lug on the bottom that's all the way tight. So, all right, we're grabbing about there, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, 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 twelve. thirteen. So, what we did is we, we, we looked, right? We have thirteen churns on that lug. That's exactly what we're, we're going to aim for now. Um, I want to show you guys real quick again aftermarket suspension you're not going to have this spindle this is different this is part of a four inch lift but a lot of you guys will be having an upper control arm similar to cognito it's going to be bigger and it's going to stick out past the spindle much more than a stock one would the stock one sits in a lot more it's a lot smaller and that's why you'll see a lot of guys that'll run big tires that'll just say i turned up my keys put big tires on it and it doesn't rub the the um you know the any of the suspension components necessarily but it may rub the frame the inside of the fender here 
uh, the sway bar. I mean, there's a lot of things on the inside before you start modifying the outside when it starts to poke out more. You're gonna be starting to hit a lot of these inner components. So, that's why I want to show you guys up close what the issue is. The bigger tires hitting this upper control arm is really the biggest thing that you're, you're gonna to wanna to look for, right? And let's go in there one more time and you'll be able to tell that the wheel is not gonna hit it. At least not in a 20 inch, right? Most of you guys are running in 20s. Um, when you guys get down into the smaller sizes, you could hit the tie rods, you could hit the spindle uh, with no spacer at all. So if you're running a modified spindle, which is gonna be a four inch or bigger lift, um, there's so many different combinations and options that are out there. I think if you're running a four inch anyways, and uh, you, you definitely at this height, you wanna run some sort of spacer to kick it out if you're gonna stick with OEM wheels, which is not as common. A lot of you guys wanna do OEM wheels on a leveling kit on 35s or 37s. Anyways, we're gonna jump to the spacers now. This is why you wanna have the room that you do have in there. I do wish I had stock a stock suspension set up for you with like, you know, basically a leveling kit to show you this on. Maybe in the future I can do that and uh, take a customer's truck and take the time to do it. Um, but anyways, the, the wheels themselves, um, you know, if you want to look at it from the side, you could tell the positive offset that it has. If you try to just eyeball the wheel, not look at the rubber and don't look at the rubber, but look at the wheel itself, right? You could tell that it pokes in, right? And then this is a zero offset wheel. And if we had to say, it's pretty flush with the fender. If not, it's sticking out a little bit more. So if we had a 10.8 inch wide tire on the back, you know, forget the height, and then a 10.8 inch, eight inch uh, tire right here, then when we sat them side by side, you would know, hey, this is how much it pokes. But this is as close as I can get it for you guys, um, you know, as far as what it's gonna look like. And you're gonna tell right now, like, oh, how much poke it's really gonna have when you start throwing spacers on there. Um, I'll try and compare them side by side. So I'm gonna get all these unwrapped right now, but that's, you know, I ripped out some of the, um, ripped off some of the, the saran wrap and the packing and stuff. But you can see the sheer size of 3 8 1.35, and two inch. All right, guys, so I got them all laid out. We'll get up nice and close. So right here is our like 10 millimeter or it's um, you know a 3 8 spacer. This is the smallest spacer that you can get on the market that is wheel and hub centric. So avoid those quarter inch spacers if you see them out there. Um, it's not worth it, right? So I would just get something, get it done correctly, which is gonna be these from Bora. There's our co-branded logo, Scope Motorsports right there. Um, right here is our 1.35 and Bora doesn't make this size for anybody else. They only make it for us. Um, I just started replacing my one and a half inch uh, one and a half inch ones for this, and I'll explain you know in a minute why we went with that size. And then over here, the two inches, the most popular. This is what I sell the most out of. By far, it exceeds ten times what these sell. Um, I think the biggest thing on the two inch is that the OEM studs are. We'll say approximately because I've used different measuring devices, electronic and like tape measures and stuff. Um, pretty dang close, like super, super close to one and three quarters of an inch. I'm gonna go over and show you on the truck why we're gonna go with these three sizes. So I'm gonna slide these on. I'm gonna show you how much, um, you know, how much room we have to thread on. Uh, I suspect we're gonna have ample, ample room um, if not more than what stock is to to thread these spacers on right because these are full-on adapters with studs and then this is where we're going to lose some and i wonder how much we're going to lose we're going to start at that over there with uh 13 churns and then we're going to put that guy on there but <clears throat> let's jump over here so i'm going to take this off pause for a second and i'm going to explain the spacers on the inside of this on why you want to go with those sizes all right so here here we are um and th this is really what I wanted to show you guys and why we're going with the sizes that we're going with. These studs right here, these are one and three quarters of an inch. And then over here, I wanna show you guys why this is gonna matter um, when you're kind of doing the math here. This is one and three quarters. So essentially you think I need a one and three quarter inch spacer to clear this and not have any problems. Well, 
when you come over here, you're gonna start to see that in between where the lugs go through, or the studs go through, excuse me, you're gonna have, these are half inch deep uh, on the OEM wheels, they're all gonna be about a half inch. Um, you're gonna have these pockets that are in there, right? So we have our 135. If I can get it on there. And now you can start to tell why we don't have to go to that size. This is gonna explain a lot for everybody. Um, now this is only gonna stick out about 0.4 inches when it's all the way seated. So, and this sticking out 0.4 inches is gonna be going into our 0.5 inch pocket. Now I didn't wanna make this a 125 because we're not leaving any room for, I don't know if you guys do this later on, somehow you get maybe into here, you get some debris in here. Um, I mean, I can't imagine that, but you know, what if these studs right here have been stretched? I mean, we have to have some sort of variation or I mean, some flexibility in there just in case, you know, I don't wanna have that thing just like buttoned up against it. And then if that doesn't seat all the way, your whole wheel and tire is gonna be wobbly, right? So um, that was the whole reason I wanted to go with that. Now, not all aftermarket tires have those pockets. For example, this one does. And I swear that I thought it didn't when I installed it, but whatever. And they actually have deeper pockets. These are about three quarters of an inch. So, you know, I guess in theory, you could almost go to, uh, I mean, you almost could go to a one inch spacer adapter like that if you wanted to run like these KMCs, you really could be about an inch or if you ask for a custom size, which we can get made for you, you know, you do like 1.1 inches and you just want the absolute minimum. Maybe you want to just do like a kind of a pre-runner stance on the front of the truck, um, you know, something like that. So that's why we did this size, right? So we'll take this off and let's jump over to our two inch. You're gonna see right now why so many of you guys like the two inch. It's bigger, it's beefier, and you can see that once you thread in everything that you need to in here, you have plenty of room. You're still wheel centric, hub centric, everything's perfect. And no matter what wheel you put on there, no matter what, it will fit. And it's gonna have a nice little stance to it, right? That's still not a ton. And when you put a 37 on there, you're not sticking out any more than the zero offset in the back. So if you like that stance, you like the poke that it has, let's go hop onto the other side. Right now, the tire and the whole entire truck's lifted up way high in the front, it's jacked up. But you guys can kind of tell from looking at this angle, if you put two inch spacers with 35, 1350s on a leveling kit, on a four inch kit, whatever, this is the stance that you're looking for. So this is how much the maximum amount it's gonna be sticking out. It's not a lot. But a lot of you guys want the minimum. Nick, what's the smallest adapter or spacer or whatever I can run? That's kind of a loaded question because you can run our 135s, which is what I would highly recommend, um, having all new studs and everything, or you guys can slide this guy on. That gives you just enough room that if this tire, if you're running like a 35, 1250, is starting to rub or hit on your upper control arm, I mean, that's all the room that you need. Um, so I would tell you guys, after looking at all of this, and I'll take this off in a minute here, and then I'm gonna try and button up some of these, the tires onto the, uh, the wheels and let you see what all of them look like next to each other. Um, I'm gonna kind of give you my general recommendation. I think if you guys are doing 35s on stock wheels and doing a leveling kit, I think that's the spacer to go with. If you're doing 35s and you're not doing a leveling kit, I guess in the basic terms, meaning upper control arms specifically, a lot of these come in a leveling kit. Leveling kit consists of shocks, upper arms, and torsion keys that you can't see right now underneath the truck to help lift the truck up. So I would say we'll talk specifically about upper control arms because those are going to be the factor on 35s on um, you know what is going to make it not fit. Uh, potentially and if you do a, a 35 1250 or some of these metric sizes that are 13 inches or bigger 13 fives you're gonna want at least a small spacer like that um, now with that said you could still 
opt for the 1.35. It's a safe bet. It's a super safe bet. Um, you could do the two inch as well, but the smallest would be that three eighths. Um, now, if you want to go for this guy and you want to do 37s on the leveling kit, no matter what leveling kit it is, it's not going to hit the, we're not going to have an issue with it necessarily hitting the upper control arm, especially on your 37, 1250s, maybe the 1350s, depending on the tire. <clears throat> We're gonna eliminate that issue, right? Because the height of the tire doesn't it doesn't really matter when it comes to the spacers. We're talking about the width. Um, that's why some of you guys are running a 37, 1150, and you're like, dude, I have no issues. As far as it um, hitting any of the suspension components, right? So that's the number one key thing. The number two thing, if you run that small spacer though, on a 37, is that you're too tall and you're still starting to hit some of these components in here. So you're gonna hit some of the frame possibly the sway bar um it's just sucked in too much so if you're gonna run 37s um most generally i'm just gonna tell you the 135 or the two inch is gonna be the way to go so i think that's kind of my general consensus is that you can run any of these sizes for 35s if you want to run 37s i would still run the one through five or the two inch i've seen a lot of you guys on there run smaller spacers quarter inch half inch and I'm only going by your feedback, so you gotta remember that I haven't tried every single combination, so I cannot tell you everything that does and doesn't fit, but several of you guys have said half inch spacers do not work with 37s only because they still rub. Um, and it's at full lock, I mean, it's not undrivable. Um, you know, if you don't mind it rubbing a little bit or you don't mind going all the way and not hitting full lock, then you're fine. So, um, that's really all I had for you guys. I just wanted to show you all the different spacers on the truck and explain why I offer these three sizes. And again, it's this is the smallest spacer you can get away with if you need a little bit of space. And now we're gonna hop into the way it looks on the truck and then how many turns we can get on each one of these um, adapters. And then I'm gonna show you something on these if we don't get enough turns that we do want. I have another solution for that as well. All right, I'm gonna get that lug nut on there and see how many turns we can get. Here, just uh, another peek on the inside with the 3 8 spacer. Look how much room we got. Look how much room we got right here on that upper control arm. I mean, ample room, right? We are totally good right here. I can tell you just fastening these other two down, I didn't get a lot of turns. So, one down, let's here. We got one, two, three. Four, five, six, almost seven. If that was tight, that would be seven. So that's that's something to keep in mind right there that we're within the safe limits with having a three eight spacer. I think if you did a half inch spacer, uh, then you'd be really kind of pushing that line. But we're totally good right there. We're gonna call that seven because that was hand tight and I know I had some room to go. And we don't even have all the rest of the fasteners on there. I just have two lug nuts that are tightened down. Um, and I'm gonna show you something else next. Check this out, right? All right, so what's in this bag is two different kinds of aftermarket lug nuts. And uh, you can get these from us. Bora makes these and offers them. And basically it's an open-ended lug nut and a closed-ended. And the open end is just in case um, you think you're going to be bottoming this out and it's going to protrude all the way through, um, then that's when you want that, right? You really want to make sure that these things don't bottom out. And um, what it's doing here is it's allowing it to seat in deeper to give us more turns and uh, secure the, the wheel on there a lot more. So we're going to see how many turns we can get here since we're only able to get seven. Um, and this is really only going to apply to the 3 8 application. When we get these other adapters that are right here, sitting here, I mean, these studs are way long enough, so these are not gonna be a problem at all. Um, I mean, you can look at the sheer length of these things, and I'll measure these right now and give you guys that, um, that measurement, but I mean, if this is the same or exceeds stock, and this is exactly what the wheel is gonna be sitting flush on, then we already have an idea that these are gonna be ample, perfect, we're gonna have no issues. So we're gonna go ahead and give these both a try. 
and see how many threads we can get them on. I suspect obviously they're gonna go on the same amount, but they're gonna be two different finishes. These are gonna be more expensive and these are gonna be a little bit cheaper, just not look as nice. But again, that's gonna depend on the wheel that you have. If you're gonna be putting on OEM wheels like this, these might look better or maybe these in a chrome would look better. Um, or if you're gonna have something that maybe you run these spacers on an aftermarket wheel and you have a cap um, like my black rhinos had and then at that point this might be a better option right so um, let's jump to it all right so I'm gonna try closed-ended open-ended let's go ahead and give this closed-ended one a try here or, I mean uh, yeah closed-ended one so what are we grabbing here come on uh, about right there. So we're pointing down this way. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Wow. That went all the way down. I mean, that is incredible. Wow. That thing seated down like just a hair over 13 turns. Um, that's pretty drastic change, right? Like that's, that's major. These things are obviously, um, they're great and they work great for your OEM wheels. And you'll be able to tell it's a different design that gets it to get in there deeper. Um, wow. I mean, that's, that's comforting to know that. And I really don't even think we need to use this open-ended one. We already know exactly what we're, um, what we're gonna get out of it so 13 turns guys so if you do want to have the 38 spacers with the comfortability of having um the all the all the turns to get it all the way on there i mean that's that's the way to go so i would definitely consider getting some of these i'll put these on the website as an option on a drop down when you buy the 38 spacers you'll have the option to either say no or yes to these and um I'm gonna have to figure out, I'll probably have to put a couple different options for you guys, depending on what color and everything that you want. So yeah, there you kind of have it. Let's jump into the bigger sizes and see how much it makes the wheel and tire stick out and um, go from there. Again, that's three eighths. Got it. So that right there is the 1.35. <coughs> Excuse me. Now you can start to see where it's starting to poke out a little bit right so if you did a nice 11.5 tire you know like a 37 11 50 i mean you could really truly be flush with the fender even a 35 35 and 11 and a half and a 35 12 and a half right then at that point maybe sitting out about a half inch but still nothing compared even the wheel, still nothing compared to the back on that zero offset, right? Once we get into that two inch adapter is when you're gonna start to see these things kind of be the same. But especially in person, it's really clear, still doesn't stick out. Checking how much room we have out of here. I mean, now you guys can really start to tell. We get our whole hand in here. The wheel is definitely not an option. And no matter what tire we put on here is not going to be an option at all either. I mean, not be an issue. Wow. Um, yeah, so that's really what I want to show you guys. So sorry I'm trying to drag this on. Like one, I'm getting over from being sick. And two, it's been raining like crazy. And I started this video the second it said it was going to stop raining. That's why it's like crazy overcast right now um, here in California. So I'm trying to time this as best as I can. But believe it or not, it is so hard to keep all three of these sizes in stock. I just keep ordering, ordering, ordering. You guys are ordering them faster than I can keep them. And I appreciate the support, which is probably something I want to say in the middle of this video. I kind of should have said in the beginning. If you appreciate any of this content, please come to scovamotorsports.com. Reach out to me, Nick, at scovamotorsports.com, scovamotorsports at gmail.com. Got all kinds of emails. You guys can reach out to me on American Duramax. Uh, or Scova Motorsports on Instagram. Um, what else? You guys can hit me up in the, in the comments section below. 
I'm here to help. I'm here to be part of the community and to help you guys. There is other vendors that are out there that are not doing anything wrong. They're actually doing it right. Um, but they're, they're there to make money. I don't see them driving around trucks like this or the red LM2. I don't see them taking the time to, to educate you guys. They just want to push a product, make the money, go home, hang out with their family. They're not doing anything wrong. So please do not take that as taking uh, talking crap. But I am asking you guys to come support me. I'm taking time out of my day to just educate you guys and give you the best products possible. Could have just sold you guys even like the inch and a half spacers, but I wanted to just come out with something that literally is answering all of the questions I get from you guys in the best way possible. And um, I'm gonna keep this part in the video. I, I tend to edit that part out because it's like a sales pitch or whatever, but um, this, you guys subscribing to these videos, commenting down below, and then obviously um, keeping the scope of motorsports, you know, company going like that is what keeps me going bringing you guys content when these trucks come out I mean they're not cheap I mean I went out and sold my 2015 to buy this truck um, and I did it because I wanted to stay relevant with you guys and I wanted to live the products that I sell to you guys I didn't want to just say buy this this has got great margins stupid um, anyway so back to the spacers um, that is Honestly, incredible in my opinion. So I really like that. Um, what I do need to do, actually, I'll give you guys that measurement here in a second, um, so I don't have to cut this video. But I'm gonna see how much we get out of these threads. Um, I suspect a lot of turns. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Dude, that's 24 and a half. It's like 24 and a half turns. Dude, that's like almost double factory. Um, wow, that is a big difference. And that obviously does not surprise me because when you look at these studs, these are threaded from top to bottom. You know, these are probably the close to the, the same exact thing. They'll probably 1.75. Let's grab a measuring tape and look. And I'm gonna explain to you guys kind of like why it's like that. So we're gonna do a little quick one here. Wow, that's almost two inch. Um, yeah, so your stock studs are one point um, 1.75, right? One and three quarters. And then these are about two inches. Now keep in mind that the stock, the stock studs, I've already done all these measurements. I can pull this off and show you, but there's half an inch on there. Um, that's not really threaded, right? Guys are like, Hey, did I strip these out? No, you didn't strip them out. They're designed that way to help ease that lug onto there and keep it from cross threading. Um, you know, maybe from tire shops or you guys doing it whatever I mean, anybody that's going to be working on the truck it just keeps them from cross threading um you know but these right here i'm telling you wow this is why i keep telling you guys that's the 1.35 that is the spacer to buy by far if you have these types of trucks i am super stoked to offer that to you guys that is the spacer to buy by far um keep in mind remember when we were at this i think we we're i wrote it down we're at like seven and then obviously we were able to get close to factory. Um, that's crazy. That's crazy to me. Um, you know, when we put the other lug nuts in here, we were able to get close to factory, how much we were able to turn those lugs. But I guess why that matters to me and why I'm putting such emphasis on it is like, that's my thing. Like, are these things gonna break? I haven't told you guys this in the video yet, but these are rated for 30,000 pounds each. This tire, what is this tire rated for, right? I know, yeah, 37.50. If it's ran single, if it's ran on a dually, you get a little less per tire at 34.15 or something like that, it doesn't matter. Um, most any tires and wheels you're gonna find are gonna be under 4,000 pounds. There's some HD method wheels that'll be like 4,200 pounds. But just for reference, that's 30,000 pounds that this adapter is rated for. Um, I mean, so it's when I say this one or the 135, they're all rated for that. Um, I mean, the hardware down to the Alcoa um, T6061 aluminum solid blocks these things are made from. 
I mean, these things are no joke. When you put these on your truck and you guys are like, I'm hauling a 40 foot toy hauler, I'm hauling a dump truck, throw it at it. You're gonna break the wheels before you're gonna break these adapters off. And there's a reason that you have never, not once, have you seen on the internet or wherever, you have not seen one of these things break. Just had to do it one more time. And um, I'm gonna write it down right now, but that 1.35 inch uh, adapter, which is gonna be the same as the two inch, these uh, the studs are the same. Um, I'm just like, wow, it's 24 turns. So um, that's really, really impressive. And that's gonna have peace of mind that that wheel is not gonna come off that adapter. Um, Cause I've seen some of you guys go out and buy bigger spacers like this and half inch or three quarters of an inch. And I'm like, guys, you, you really don't wanna be doing that. If you're gonna be going anything bigger than say a half inch spacer like this, you wanna to go to an adapter. And not only any adapter, you wanna to go to a Bora adapter. We're gonna jump over to the two inch right now and we're gonna slide that guy on. But I just wanted to show you guys 24 turns. Wow. Okay guys, so that's it. We got our two inch spacer on here. Again, this is the biggest worst case scenario. Um, look at that. Look at that poke. Not much at all. That wraps it up guys. That's the two inch spacer. Just want to show you guys kind of the offset. Look at it compared to the back. It doesn't stick out very much at all. Um, got room for as big of a tire as you could off, ever put in here. You're never going to have an issue at all. The tire's not going to hit anything. As far as suspension components go, it's not gonna hit the frame, sway bar. Obviously, the bigger the tire you go, you do wanna have like a level or a lift kick because then you're gonna start running into hitting, um, you know, down here and over there in the fender. But again, you guys can figure that out or just ask me, message me. Um, you guys can reach out to me anytime. Nick at scovamotorsports.com is uh, my main email or scovamotorsports at gmail.com. Um, you know, feel free to reach out to me if you guys are not sure what will and won't fit. Uh, behind me, you can't see it. I got a ton of kryptonite in stock. Um, I'm able to ship super fast to you guys. And then over at the warehouse, we have four inch kits, seven inch kits, six inch kits, a uh, ton more kryptonite and co cognito products. I mean, we have a ton of stuff. So um, we probably got it in stock if you need it or want it, or we have it on the way or I can get it really fast. Um, but yeah, I just kind of wanted to get that, give that information to you guys. Just reach out to me on your individual plans. Hey, this is the wheel and tire I want to go with. This is the lift kit I want to go with. This is, I mean, just, just lay it all out for me and what you kind of have um, in mind or if you're looking for recommendations. But I will tell you that if you guys are going with spacers, just keep in mind, they're the strongest spacers on the market by far. Bora is, they have the best name out there. You're not going to find anyone saying that they broke their Bora spacers. I have not seen it one time yet. Um, they have a lifetime warranty. And, um, you know, keep in mind, these are a $3,700 up upgrade for these freaking wheels. Um, I mean, these things I know are way, way stronger than the ones that come from overseas. You know, KMC is awesome. I love it. I won't trade it for anything else. I love the look of them. But that's why I did that. I love the look of the black wheels um, versus, you know, the OEM 20s. I actually really like these, but I think I'd have to black them out, put them on 37s. You never know. Maybe I'll have a second set because I can never seem to make up my mind anyways. Um, and then I'll probably be throwing on some 1.35 inch spacers. <laughs> so anyways, guys, I just, I don't know what else to say. Uh, I didn't really write this one all down. I just wanted to, um, you know, the very moment that I could get it to stop raining outside. I want to give you guys this because um, actually right now I'm starting to run out of spacers yet again. And I really wanted to have all three of these lined up for you guys. So you guys could see, you know, as I'm talking here, you know, what the difference looks like. So just remember when you're comparing this, you know, this side's kind of leaning comparing this side. I mean, again, we're, <clears throat> we're really not, um, we're really not sticking out very far. If you got a 20 by 10, I mean, you would be sticking out because you'd have a negative offset, and this is nowhere near that. So if you're going with a zero offset wheel, expect, uh, which is a 17, and 18, or a 20, or, I mean, even some of the 22s, whatever. But those, um, you know, 20 by 9 options, uh, this with a 2-inch adapter is going to be pretty dang close to that. And 
you are not sacrificing anything, anything as far as reliability goes. Um, you guys can tow whatever you want. 30,000 pound is what these things are rated for. These tires themselves are not even rated for 4,000 and the wheels are probably rated somewhere around there as well. Um, so that's all I got for you guys right now. I'm gonna end this video here. Uh, if you got any questions, if there's something that I didn't answer probably five times over in this video, let me know and I will do my best to answer down below. Uh, again, you can find this down below in the description, scovamotorsports.com. I'm gonna stock the heck out of these things, all three sizes, and there's gonna be something for everybody. And two inch is probably gonna still be the most popular because it looks great, but that 1.35 is gonna really take off for you guys, the guys that wanna, um, you guys that wanna sit there and you wanna have just like the bare minimum that will sit in those OEM pockets and you get to utilize um, all that space that is sitting in here, you guys are gonna get to use all of that. So, might as well, if you got those pockets back there, I would say most of the aftermarket wheels have them. All of the OEM wheels that I have found in the 17s, 18s, and 20s do. But if you're not sure, take a look, check out what you got already, um, and then go ahead and order them up. And then also, if you have a two inch, well, two inch spacer or two inch adapter, if that's what you're set on, don't even worry about it at all. Um, the last thing is, I'd say probably 10 to 15% of you guys, a very small percentage will run I mean, obviously the smaller the better so it doesn't look weird, but you guys will run spacers on only the front. Keep in mind on the big tires, you only have an issue in the front. You don't have an issue in the back. You do not need to buy a set of four of these. We only sell them in pairs. So you need two pairs to make a whole set, um, but we sell them in pairs for a reason. You only need two for the front to get you going, and then you can decide if you want the two in the back later on. So um, that's it guys, thank you. Subscribe, please. Um, as long as I see that number going up, I'm gonna keep making videos. And if it plateaus or goes down, I'll probably still make videos for you guys, but that just sucks. So um, let's get it up there. Let's get to like 10,000 or something. Cause honestly, if I could start making money on YouTube, um, cause right now it's pretty lame. Um, and the way that they set up things, um, I don't know. I just wanna give back to you guys and do some giveaways. I think that'd be a lot of fun. I don't think we're gonna be uh, anytime soon giving like trucks away, but there's a plenty of stuff that you guys you know would like maybe uh if you get to this end of the video let me know down below what you guys want to see you know give away maybe i could do a little something like a little brand new edge inside or something like that or you know those fit every vehicle or most vehicles that are out there um you know we'll see maybe we could uh maybe we could do something like that so i'll catch you guys on the next one appreciate you watching hopefully this is informative and this is gonna be a little bit of a longer one today um Usually I'm a little bit more organized, but I just had to throw this together for you guys before I ran out of stock. See ya.